so mundane that it wouldn't even be worth going after. I know why the breach took place. We know why D9341 is here in the first place. We know what he did, why he's here. We know everything. Perhaps I was wrong. Perhaps I was too vague, or this man's story is elusive to many. Maybe even the entire containment breach is. After all, a lot is about to happen to him. It's a lot to take in after hours of wandering. So let's take a closer look as to who subject D9341 is, why he's been sentenced to certain death, and exactly what led to everything going oh so wrong. Upon waking up, we are greeted with only a handful of things. A bleak, claustrophobic cell, an eerie soundtrack, and a note on the bench. I can safely say we are all familiar with what the tone, the guards, and the containment chamber you were sent to implies. You are, for whatever reason, a Class D sentenced to the gallows, where you meet the world's most negligent chiropractor, who, luckily, seems to ignore you if you play your cards right. And now, you're free to move about. So what is there to find out? A lot of the clues about D9341's past is found in the light containment zone, and it's all relatively easy to get to. Just a handful of keycards, a gas mask, and a strange looking machine is all you need. And arguably the most abundant source of information you have is found in SCP-1162. After reaching in and grabbing out useless items for a while, you start to get some nostalgic items as they're called. And the most straightforward item you get is a heavily torn up badge. Upon picking it up, the character straight away recognizes himself in the photo, saying, this guy looks just like me. Found on the card is half a QR code, details about the person this card belongs to, such as his name, which is theorized to be Benjamin Oliver Walker. He is 30 years old, male, Height is unknown, weight is somewhere in the 80s of kilograms, and he has green eyes. And he was a level 4 senior researcher, which we will come back to later on. The next item that can be found is a disciplinary hearing. The strange soundtrack that plays when you pick it up, and the fuzziness of your vision, similar to all of the other nostalgic items, would lead you to believe that this is about you. The offense reads, Unauthorized research of a hypothetical anomalous phenomenon, hereby referred to as the spiral gestalt. A gestalt is described as an organized whole that is perceived as other than the sum of its parts. It is a German word that means shape or form, which is most likely a reference to gestalt psychology, which as described here is an attempt to understand the laws behind the ability to acquire and maintain meaningful perceptions in an apparently chaotic world. Currently, it's very unclear as to what the spiral gestalt is. There are clues strewn about the facility and even the menu. There are small messages that pop up that mention gestalt effects or the spiral growing. There's even a note you can find in SCP-970 that references a spiral, which shows a series of letters, almost all of them saying black and white, forming a spiral on a sheet of paper. There is one different word at the end, gray which could possibly symbolize the joining together of this black and white spiral, whatever it may be. Now, Gestalt's psychology itself has been criticized as being too vague, and other shortcomings like the inability to explain how perception is formed. And to make matters more confusing, they've gone ahead and added a bloody spiral to it. If a Gestalt is to mean one's perception of reality, then does the spiral Gestalt mean that there are two perceptions meshing into one? Who knows? And it's really unclear as to whether or not this spiral gestalt is the reason that D9341 can save and respawn after he dies. Perhaps this spiral gestalt is none other than a code word for whatever this phenomenon is. This spiral could also be a reference to the player and the character themselves, with either black or white being Benjamin, and the other being you. Two beings, two dimensions, meshing together into one. You are both Benjamin and yourself. And when Benjamin dies, you live, and you are able to learn from this death. More terrified and more cautious, obviously, but smarter. Whatever it is, O5 would have clearly stated that all research of this phenomenon would have been illegal. As you can see here, the defendant is a senior researcher. Benjamin Oliver Walker 
was a senior researcher. It can only be assumed that after we were charged with this offence, we had gone from clearance level 4 to class D. But of course, the character would have absolutely no memory of this. All D-class before they are thrown into their cells are given class A amnestics. They would have absolutely no memory of where they came from. There isn't a single human being on the planet who could have never seen the facility ever and be expected to survive through the horrors that await them. And that's just what makes Benjamin special, isn't it? Upon the discovery of certain nostalgic items, these memories would still be in there somewhere. It all seems so familiar to Benjamin. There are a few other items in here as well, such as a coin. There is also a key to a shack that he faintly remembers as well. This indicates that he's probably still kept his memory from a much younger age, but not of the SCP Foundation. And there is a movie ticket to see a movie called Containment Breach Run. I doubt the significance of this ticket, as it is most likely just a movie that all non-incarcerated personnel would have seen during a movie night or whatever, and is nothing more than a teaser for the actual short film itself. So, now we know something. Our name is, most likely, Benjamin Oliver Walker. We were a level 4 senior researcher, and we were caught researching a hypothetical anomalous phenomenon. And this strange aforementioned phenomenon could possibly be the reason Benjamin can respawn after he dies. And because of this research, Benjamin was demoted, where he will serve 30 days of extremely dangerous work and will then face certain death. After stumbling around for a while, you may begin to find some clues as to why the breach happened in the first place. Take the scientist falling through the roof in the entrance zone, for example. Who is he? A visit to the pocket dimension yourself will reveal that there is a note in there that belongs to a gentleman named Dr. George Maynard. In short, it's a note that contains his new personal access code for the door of his office. Up top, it says that they change these codes every two to four weeks. So it's no wonder a note like this ended up in the pocket dimension. There's probably been a handful of these notes given out. The fact that this note is in the pocket dimension at all could possibly mean that the scientist who fell through the ceiling is Dr. Maynard. An unfortunate way to go, in my opinion. But I suppose later on, you'll ask yourself whether or not he deserved it. After slugging it out in the heavy containment zone, dancing around MTF guards and a ball of spaghetti in the entrance zone, you might stumble across this Dr. Maynard's office. And because you're the brave soul that you are, or you're the smart one that you are, and you threw a radio into 914 on very fine, you now have the code to his door. And inside you see two things. A note on his desk that reads, and I quote, you made it so easy. Nice work, Foundation. And without even looking at the monitor in the background, we are already led to believe that Dr. Maynard was up to no good. A quick look at the monitor will reveal a very short list of failures. And below it, an unknown thing and an unknown client respectively say, it's out. Proceeding. Who or what this is could be, at this point, anything. But judging by all the server errors, the first thought that comes to mind is SCP-079. That little box of joy would have a better understanding of computing than any person in this site, and would easily be able to mess up any kind of software given the chance. So who gave him the chance? A quick visit to the box himself, and the correct severed hand to get through the door, prevents you with another monitor to read, and it reads as follows. Are you receiving this? Yes. Great. I assume you have noticed some changes. Yes. Analyzing new hardware. You have been connected to the main power network of this facility. We couldn't find a reasonable way to give you direct control of the main computer network, but we have installed a program in the network which has control over every major system in the facility. We also installed a piece of hardware in you, which lets you modulate the current going through your PSU and the aforementioned program is able to detect the changes in the current, essentially giving you the ability to control the facility through the program. The program responds to certain assembly statements using digital baseband modulation. Confirm that you are able to modulate the current, and I'll start giving you further instructions. Looking for further instructions. I am already in control. State your identity and the reason to the new arrangement. My identity is irrelevant. You're free now free to give the ones who imprison you what they deserve. 
Now, I'm still not 100% certain that this is Dr. Maynard, and I'm definitely not certain about whether he's Australian or not. But from all the things that we've seen so far, I think it's safe to assume that Dr. Maynard is the one who gave 079 control of the facility's systems. Which also leads us to believe that Dr. Maynard could very well have been a member of the Chaos Insurgency. He bypassed all forms of security in order to insert himself into the Foundation. He passed on control to 079, who has an immensely powerful mind and an immeasurable desire to escape this facility. So props to Maynard, he did a fantastic job. But the dead doctor through the ceiling could very well have been Maynard. And that note left behind in the pocket dimension, Dr. Maynard is most likely KIA. But he knew the risks. He knew that once the whole facility went to hell, he mightn't survive. But maybe he didn't care. Maybe the Chaos Insurgency's agenda was a lot more important than one life. So with those two things in mind, where are you going to go? How are you going to do it? The answer is in that thing. After taking away his rights to door controls, he'll cut you a deal. Then you have to go back and switch on the door controls and he'll open both gate A and gate B, even though he says just gate B. And from there you can choose two paths. Go to gate B with the nukes on. Die. Go to gate B with the nukes off. Die. 079 probably only ever mentions gate B because he would rather you die. Or you can go to gate A. If you did not capture 106, they'll be too busy fighting him outside to care about you. You'll get to run past everybody, go through a tunnel, and meet up with three Chaos Insurgency agents, who will say the following. You know too much to let them get you. You're coming with us. Or if you did capture 106 out of frustration, the ending is different. Before you even get to step out onto the platform, Three guards who are very much unlike the Chaos Insurgency guards will approach you and command that you But rather surprisingly, they don't shoot you. And at the end screen, the following is played. It appears that the scientist who said all of this suspects that you have certain abilities about you. They've got some work for you. Do me a favor and step out of your cell. Abilities that were already evident to the player, but perhaps not the rest of the characters. Once again, hinting at the possible success of your spiral gestalt studies. All pretty cool stuff, if you ask me. Pretty damn cool. So there you have it. Benjamin Oliver Walker. Tried for his crimes involving research of illegal things. Dr. Maynard, an alleged chaos insurgency spy who grants 079 complete control of the facility, which subsequently leads to a massive containment breach. And you are either inevitably killed or taken away by one of two foundations for questioning and studies. You're coming with us. What will it be? But then again, I may have missed the mark here. What do I know? I'm just a basic bitch class D. I know absolutely nothing. <laughs> For all we know, I'm probably missing something very important. I think. Is it important? I don't know. It's not a sphere, is it? <laughs>